Let's go to the next theme of our discussion. Is the Catholic Church relevant for the world of today? As we have heard from the beginning of today's seminar, the Church is now going through a moment of crisis and self-purification. There is no doubt that there has been an impatient struggle for renewal, struggle to correct her flaws introduced by her members, which its own self-examination. The Church strives with great degree of loyalty and perseverance to witness to the Gospel values, taking the narrow way that Christ has recommended. Is the Church relevant today? Every move of the Church is no doubt in this direction. There has been this crisis of credibility due to the faults of her members. Yet, with the guidance and power of the Holy Spirit, the Church is sailing through these turbulent times. There are so many criticisms levied against Pope Francis and his strategies. He moves ahead with great transparency and relentless commitment to purify the Church of her faults and take stern measures that such situations never arise in the future. Amidst this waves of criticism and insult, accusation and ridicule, the Church continues to take forward this process of true conversion and bring about credibility on the part of her members and the mission. I shall just take four moments that the Church is going through and give you some examples of what the Church is doing to really move, move away from this crisis and build up the Church as a power for good. Let me start with the Vatican Summit on the Protection of Minors that took place on the 21st of 20 to 24th of February 2019. And it was a correct response from the part of the Church to answer to this crisis of sexual abuse that shook the credibility of the Church. Though there may be a lot of criticism that the church is silent, church is covering up and so on, look at the words of the Holy Father who very clearly affirms in every case that the church is committed to its change. Let me quote a few of uh, the statements of the Holy Father. He says, if in the church there should emerge even a single case of abuse, which already in itself represents an atrocity, that case will be faced with utmost seriousness. And he also says, it is a duty to pay close heed to this silent, choked cry. Again he says, the church will spare no effort and do whatever is necessary to bring justice to those who have been hurt. And he also says that the church is committed to constantly renew his priests towards holiness. And he also says, the duty of the church is to hear, watch over, protect and care for the abused, exploited and forgotten children wherever they are. No abuse should be ever covered up or not taken sufficiently seriously, since covering up abuse favors the spread of evil and adds a further level of scandal. And very beautifully he says, the wounds of those who have been abused are our wounds. Their fate is ours. They are not our enemies, but bone of our bones, flesh of our flesh. We want every activity and place of the church always to be fully safe for the minors. We want all possible measures to be taken so that similar crimes are not repeated. I think it was a significant shift on the part of the church to give a collective response to this grave abuse crisis that is eroding the church's credibility and undermining its mission throughout the world. And as I said, the Pope very clearly to all those in the summit said, especially to the bishops and the religious superiors, that they need to act with responsibility, accountability and transparency. He said there should be zero tolerance towards this issue. This is the attitude of the church. Let's move on from this situation of abuse, crisis of abuse, to other positive situations. The church is very much in dialogue with the world, dialogue with other religions. You can see Pope Francis who went to the UAE 
in the month of February, then to Morocco. Now next month is going to Japan, Thailand, and so on to especially build up this relationship with people of other religions, to build up the true humanity that God intended. And the document on human fraternity for world peace and living together was a statement signed by Pope Francis and Sheikh Ahmed El Taeb on the 4th of February. It was indeed a very historic move that Pope Francis could go to the heart of the Muslim world and he said so beautifully, if we believers are not able to shake hands, embrace one another, kiss one another and even pray, our faith will be defeated. Church's commitment towards the refugees and migrants. You know the church every year has special days dedicated. Day for the migrants, day for the poor, day for the sick, day for peace, uh, day for food and so on. And, the, and our Holy Father is very sensitive to this problem. He is very sensitive to every problem of the world and to the cry of the children. He is perhaps the only leader who raises his voice against every form of injustice and oppression. And he does not hesitate to criticize the global leaders and policy makers and voices out his cries for equality, peace and respect of the rights of every human person. He speaks about the globalization of indifference, which is a painful truth happening in the world and he says that we should not allow this cruelty to continue. In fact, in his message on the 105th World Day of Migrants, imagine 100 years, 105 years, the church has been celebrating World Day of Migrants and Refugees. And on that day, in his message, he says, as Christians, we cannot be indifferent to the tragedy of old and new forms of poverty and so on. And he says, we cannot remain insensitive, our hearts deadened before the misery of so many in innocent people. We must not fail to respond. And he says, the problem of refugees, the problem of migrants, are it is a problem that concerns all of us. These people are the victims of a thrower culture and we cannot leave them. We are called to restore humanity. And he says that the Lord invites us to fight for them, to love them and to protect their rights. And the next interesting theme of Pope Francis and the Church is ecology. Another area of great concern and Pope Francis very beautifully says that any harm done to the environment is an harm done to humanity. These days we have the Amazon Synod going on in Rome and many have been questioning the why of it. Why should the Pope engage himself in the Amazon? Probably we are not, uh, 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 not delved deep into the theme and the serious consequences that is going to, that is going to face humanity. As, the, as in the encyclical Laudato Si, Pope Francis says, the Amazon and the Congo Basin, they are for the entire earth and for the, uh, they occupy an important place for the future of humanity. One fifth of the air we breathe, the fresh water we drink, all comes from this Amazon. The Amazon is a mirror of humanity. And if the planet has to survive, we need to protect us. And he says environmental justice is social justice. We need to feel the earth's pain, which is closely linked to the poor, and we are all co-responsible. And that is how he brings out the concept of integral ecology. Even the smallest action has an influence on the whole system. And Pope Francis is challenging all institutions, all countries, all nations, all organizations to fight together and bring about this protection of our nature. 